Oh, hey, parts for the small engine dyno made it. And that means it's time for some fabrication. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Dirty Elbow's Garage. Okay, so most of the parts have been delivered, so I thought I'd give you a quick overview of what they look like before actually going through the assembly process. So to actually draw the power, like I mentioned, this is the hydraulic pump. What couples the pump to the motor, or the way the motor actually turns the pump is through this sprocket, and this sprocket transmits that power along this 5 8 shaft. And I've already done some machining work right here. I drilled and tapped a hole for a set screw for the for the rotary encoder. Uh, I've got an assortment of set screws, a coupler to go from my pump to my input shaft, and then this is my flow control valve. On this side of the table, I've already covered the sprocket. This is the 3 16 key that goes with this input shaft. Um, I've got my two inch flange bearings, as well as two of the 5 8 flange bearings as well. This is a cooking thermometer, but it's going to work for what I need it to. What's not here is the oil, re oil reservoir, which I'll show that and how that goes in there in the uh, final assembly process, as well as the hydraulic hoses. This is just a cover that came on the pump. And this right here is the external retaining ring that's going to be used to keep the pump mount tube from pulling away from the bearing here. Back to the fabrication, let's keep it going.
Okay, so that wraps up the assembly of the dyno as far as we're going in this video. In the next video, I'm going to be putting the hydraulic hoses that run from the pump to the flow control valve to the uh, reservoir and back to the pump. That's gonna be in the next video, as well as a little bit more talk about the data acquisition unit and how we set that up. Uh, before I go though, I just wanna cover one more time how this works to kind of clear up any kind of confusion. So I've got my pump mounted on this rotational mount like I talked about before. And you can see that the sprocket wants to move with the pump. Well, as the engine turns the sprocket, it's going to turn the shaft and turn the pump's internals moving oil. That pump is going to want to rotate in the direction that the sprocket is moving. So if I have my arm right here, I'm resisting the pump rotating in the mount. That's exactly what this load cell is doing. This arm is touching down onto this load cell and resists that rotation for me. Now, as I close the flow control valve, it's essentially like kinking a hose, it's gonna build up pressure and it's gonna make it harder to hold this pump. So more force is going to be transmitted through this arm onto this load cell. So on this side of the data acquisition unit, I'm going to have my known distance of my arm and how much load it's creating, which is going to give you my torque. The rotary encoder is going to mount over here and that's going to give me my RPM. So combining torque and RPM is power. And that's how this device is going to work. Now, I got some requests to go into a little bit of the math behind it, and I'll do that in the last video as well. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask, give us a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and thanks for watching. Welcome to Dirty Elbows. Parts for the small, small Ah, Them getting tired. This is actually pretty heavy.